Order the Monday, March 10th meeting of the Verona Common Council will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next we'll have the roll call. Ms. Lynch, please. Alderperson Bear. Here. Alderperson Diaz. Here. Alderperson Doyle? Here. Alderperson Manley? Here. Alderperson McGilvery? Here. Alderperson Rieke? Here. Alderperson Steiner? Here. And Alderperson Yers? Here. We have everyone present, so therefore we have a quorum. I thank you for that, for everyone being here. Uh, next order of business is public comment. If there's anyone that's in the public this evening that wishes to speak, we would ask that uh, if you have not signed in, there's a sign-up sheet on the podium. If you would uh, uh, sign it, if you have not, state your name and address for the benefit of those that are watching at home or even on the council here that may not know you. And um, again, not a lot of people in the audience this, not, and this evening, but I would ask that you would be respectful of um, other people that are here as far as the, the time allotment. So, Father? Hi, good evening. And uh, I just want to say thank you to the City Planning Commission for all the good work they've been doing the last few weeks. I've made some comments there that you saw public record. My only comment this evening, besides thank you for all the good work you've done and all that you do as our alder persons and our mayor for the city, uh, thank you for all your good work, uh, all of you. And so it's a genuine heartfelt thank you for your good work, so thanks. Uh, just one quick question would be uh, when we get to the City Planning Commission's recommendation, the, the plan, I just want to make sure that the part that was uh, amended will stay that way, that it will be not reintroduced as a bicycle like walking. This is my only question. Will, will that be reintroduced or will it be left out? So that was. The report will be given as to what the plan commission did. Okay. Certainly the council can amend that if, right. if they so desire. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone will make a, that type of a motion or not, and then okay. we'll just have to wait and see. I'll wait and see. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak this evening under public comment? Anyone else that wishes to speak? Good evening. I'm Carl Curtis. I'm the Executive Director of the Verona Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I know most of you, for the benefit of those out there in TV land. Uh, my address is 631 Maple Road, but my business address is 120 West Verona Avenue. And I wanted to quick, very quickly address two issues this evening. Uh, the first one is the downtown redevelopment and transportation plan. Uh, first, like uh, the father before me, I want to thank everybody who's involved in this plan, including uh, citizens who came to the many meetings and offered their input throughout the course of this. I was on the, uh, the planning group that was putting this all together, so it's been a long uh, process for me. But thank you to everybody who, who gave of their time to do this. Uh, as a business community, we were very pleased that this important issue was brought up and discussed. Uh, as you may know, the Chamber conducted a series of meetings with businesses last summer, and uh, from that we submitted a report last October to the City, which I believe you all have. It's available on our website. And There's really no need to repeat what was in that report for my comments right here, but I do want to no make one note, and that is while holding those discussions with businesses and in discussions since, including up and until today, there remains a degree of skepticism amongst several downtown business owners particularly, because quite honestly, this isn't our first downtown plan. This is actually my fifth in the sixth years I've done this. And past studies have led to, quite honestly, very little change. And I continue to hear this concern from business owners downtown that this report will be approved, put on a shelf, and collect dust for the next several years. I encourage you, the city governments, as well as city staff and city employees, to make this a plan of action, not just a placeholder on a shelf. Uh, we recognize that some parts of the plan may be taken up well into the future, decades possibly. And I also recognize that 
it may be more practical to move on, or I should say, um, I, even though that is true about being uh, a plan that may be drawn out for a long time, I encourage you very much to move on with parts of the plans that are practical to work on now as soon as you possibly can. There's a need downtown, and we really need to get something done, both for transportation and downtown redevelopment. Now, in saying this, I realize that some parts of the plan as put together, and again, I sat on the commission that commented on all this, are going to be unpopular, and they're going to require difficult decisions on everybody's part. But I would also emphasize that the plan really is as much a guideline as a plan. If there are parts in it that just are impractical and won't work, we don't have to do those parts. But I would really encourage you not to lose sight of the good parts of the plan because of those that are being objected to. It, uh, I'm often reminded of when you're in grade school and you do that exercise where you take a piece of paper and you fold it and you fold it and you fold it, then you take a pair of scissors out and you cut off a little bit from this corner, a little bit from this corner, a little bit from this corner and this corner. And it looks like you're only cutting off little bits of paper, but when you open it up, you have Swiss cheese. I really encourage you not to make this plan into Swiss cheese by uh, ignoring the good parts or being so overwhelmed by, by the parts that might not be practical and ignoring the good parts of this plan. And I guess I would say, uh, you know, in 1961, uh, it's almost cliche now, but President Kennedy asked us to ask not what, we, what uh, we, our country could do for us, but what we could do for our country. In reviewing this plan, I, and from the opinion of the downtown businesses and businesses in general, I would ask you just to consider, what can we do for Verona? Even if it's a little bit of trouble sometimes, what's good for the best and the most in the community? And if you use that as your guide, chances are everything's gonna turn out right in the end. But the one thing I do know is that inaction of any sort will only lead to more skepticism and it's probably the worst option of all of them. So thank you very much for your work on that plan. And the second thing I want to very quickly comment on is uh, later in the agenda you have an uh, issue coming up for Wisconsin Brewing Company. I'd like to express support for their plan to expand. Wisconsin Brewing Company has only been open since November and they're already proving to be a, quite an asset for the community, uh, helping establish us as a destination we're working on some events there this summer with the Goldwing motorcycle riders. Uh, it's really putting a positive stamp on this community and working with them in any way possible to uh, expand their operation is a good thing for Verona and I encourage you to consider that positive. <coughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. We uh, appreciate you making the comments this evening. We appreciate your service on that task force and certainly we uh, thank the chamber for being willing to step up to the plate and, and provide some recommendations as well, so thank you. And I apologize, I forgot, William Vernon, 301 North Main Street, Verona, Wisconsin, and I concur with, the, with uh, Carl too. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else that wishes to speak this evening? Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. I know you have a long night, so I'll try to be quick. Um, my name is Margaret Watson. I live at 6743 Rolling Oaks Lane in the town of Verona. And uh, I want to talk on num speak on item number two, which is the Wisconsin Brewing Company. Um, we support the brewing company in theory, but we don't support the time in which they want to play music until. So I have some questions as well, and so I'm hoping that I can urge the council on behalf of the more than 47 residences in that area that we could just slow down, make sure we're asking the right questions, and maybe you already have the answers to these questions. Um, what is the capacity of the patio? It, if you ask the questions, we'll respond to them a little later, okay? Excellent. Um, where will the patio be located? On which side of the building, and which, where will the speakers be facing? Depending on the size of the patio, where will everyone park? Is there a parking lot going to be in there? Has there been a sound study? Do we know what the decibel levels are going to be? Will there be a fence enclosing the patio? Um, a lot of us have children that are approaching teenage years and we want to make sure that they are outside of that fence instead of inside of that fence, if there is a fence. 
what is the current sound ordinance? So if the Wisconsin Brewing Company would like to play music until 11 o'clock at night during the week and 12 o'clock on the weekends, is that what the current, current ordinance says? Or would it be better for us to follow the ordinance? So our hope is that um, our understanding when the Wisconsin Brewery went in was that they were going to be more of a tasting room and a distributor of the delicious microbrews that they have that we like very much. But uh, if it's shaping up to be more like a capital brewery in, um, like they have in Middleton, that's fine, but let's be open about it and let's slow way down and make sure we're being fair to all the businesses in the entertainment district downtown in Verona and also to the many, many residences that are in the town. Some folks believe that this is a industrial park and I would say it is an industrial commercial park, but there are a lot of residences in that area and we are one of them, but I believe it was 47 might be more. During Verona hometown days, which is more than a mile away from where we live, we can hear it loud and clear. And we know when that event is coming because permits are pulled. We support Verona, we support Verona hometown days, but it's not going on every night when we have children who even in the summer who are swimmers are gonna be waking up early in the morning. We moved out to Verona, like many of these residences, to have the quiet enjoyment of our homes in the woods. And so we would like to work together and cooperate with the town, the city, and the Wisconsin Brewery to make this work for everybody. So I just urge you to please slow down and answer some of these questions and do our proper, you know, do the proper study. Thank you. Oh, and one last question. Are the plans on the legislature? We couldn't find them, so are the plans for the expansion anywhere where the public can view them? Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Steve? Good evening. My name is Steve Rudolph. I live at 401 Eineken in Verona. And as I'm not going to speak tonight uh, about that street that shall remain quiet. Uh, what I would like to do, however, is to speak with you just very briefly about the Chamber of Commerce and the activities associated with it. As you know, and, and first of all, I gotta commend MSA and the city uh, for the process that you went through in order to come to the recommendations that are before you tonight. But. As you know, the, the Chamber of Commerce wrote a white paper on this, and I would just like to encourage you, as Carl did, to read that white paper and to take into consideration the concerns of the Chamber. And the Chamber met with business leaders as well as school leaders, and we developed this white paper. And we would like to think that uh, we would, in cooperation with the city and the school district, continue to take a leadership position in doing whatever we can to bring businesses into this community and to bring tourism into this community. And as has been mentioned earlier, one of the things that we are doing is working on some very exciting uh, tourist attraction type of programs that we think will be uh, will be successful and as we move down this road on the development of the plan here please consider the chamber as part of your strategic alliance thank you thank you mr Rudolph. Good evening. My name is Sasha Termot. I live at 149 Railroad Street, right in the heart of downtown. And I'm also a board member of the Verona Main Street Condo Association, which is also located right there along the bike trail. And as a resident and a representative of the entire condo association, um, we all would are very excited about living right downtown in the heart of Verona and about the downtown redevelopment plans that have been expressed and the excitement of the Chamber of Commerce and others uh, to do more with the downtown area that we all so much enjoy. I think our concern is that as 
residents who have a significant interest in how the downtown redevelopment process goes. We're looking for opportunities to have uh, very, I guess, close involvement in some of the specific plans regarding the uh, plan that I know you'll be voting on tonight. In particular, we have, I think, concerns about plans to redo the intersection of Railroad Street and Main Street that I don't think are reasons that the plan shouldn't proceed as a whole or even that the intersection shouldn't be considered, um, but that we would like to see it considered with some very thoughtful, careful consideration. Um, for example, I think there are precautions that can be taken with uh, redesigning the intersection to ensure that doing so doesn't introduce additional light coming off of Main Street into the more residential neighborhoods uh, with blinders on the lights and so forth that would be in place. Similarly, I think we could look at items to ensure that um, as the traffic is redirected, that there are sufficient precautions such as a stop sign or other uh, steps that I'm sure all of you have more familiar with than I do to ensure that the speed of the traffic on Railroad Street remains appropriate for a residential uh, lane. Similarly, there are, and this is a very personal concern for me, there are some very beautiful tall trees <laughs> on Railroad Street that add a wonderful degree of character and culture to a downtown area um, where we don't have a lot of trees with that type of growth. And I'd hate to see a construction to enlarge an intersection really interfere with that kind of beauty that can't be easily replaced in our downtown area. So again, I guess I would urge that as the downtown redevelopment is approached, it be done in a really thoughtful way that preserves many of these kind of cultural treasures that we already have in our area. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Good evening, my name is Joanne Gauthier. I live at 2125 Davis Hills Drive. Uh, let's just say in earshot of the new brewery. I just wanted to um, express my, uh, I think I'm looking here at the, the plan that's going to be recommended, which would be um, music would stop at 9 p.m. during the week and 10 p.m. on the weekends. And I believe those are the same hours that the Capitol Brewery in Middleton uses right now. And I think um, we would love it if you would start with a more conservative plan like that, uh, where the music's concerned and the lateness that it's playing and let everybody see how it's all gonna turn out in the end before we go to something later like 11 p.m. or midnight. Um, I will say I have four children. <laughs> I'm about two football fields from the brewery so I imagine that um, unless we're sleeping with our windows closed every night in the summer, that it's going to be whenever there's music, we're going to know about it. So I'd appreciate the 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. ending times for the music. Thank you. Thank you for coming this evening. Good evening, my name's Lisa Kinsman. I live at 6742 Rolling Oaks Lane in the town of Verona. I am also a neighbor, um, live somewhat close by to the Wisconsin Brewery Co Brewing Company. Um, and I do urge you to um, look closely at the times the music is being played, of course. Um, we are concerned about our children and them sleeping at night. We love to leave the windows open in the summer. And if music is played late, we will hear it. Um, my um, sun goes to bed at 7 every night and on those warm nights it's nice to leave the windows open I think we can deal with it till 9 p.m. but if the music's playing much later than that I mean I go to bed before 11 p.m. Um, I think that would be tough to deal with to have music playing late into the night especially on on the weekday um, and then as a professional engineer I like to deal in numbers and statistics and what are the decibel levels going to be at um, in our area nearby? I would urge you to, you know, stick with your city ordinance um, on those facts. And um, if things are going to be louder, to let us know. Give us some concrete numbers on how many people will be on the patio, um, how loud, how many cars would be parked in the area. Traffic's also a major concern in this area. I'm really not sure where everyone's going to park. Um, we support local businesses. We just think um, that we should be respectful of each other as neighbors and um, work together to be successful. 
Um, so um, really those are the things I wanted to cover is just to be respectful of the neighbors and um, we do promote businesses and want them to be successful too, but we can work together in this, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak this evening under public comment? Anyone else in the audience? Going to third and final time, anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak? Seeing none, we are going to move on with the agenda. Uh, next, we have approval of the minutes from the February 24th meeting of the Common Council. Those minutes were included with your packet. What's your pleasure? Move approval. We have a motion by Mr. Yours. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Rickey. Were there any additions or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried and the minutes are approved. Uh, under mayor's business this evening, certainly um, the item listed on the agenda is very important, but we can't help but forget about the, uh, uh, or mention, I should say, the, the Verona area boys hockey team winning the state championship. So congratulations to uh, all the participants, all the family that have supported these boys uh, throughout the process, um, and it's just great that uh, that they won the state championship, so congratulations to them. Uh, next, I have a proclamation to read uh, this evening, and we've done this in prior years, but that doesn't mean that it's not important. It certainly is important. And the proclamation is for March for Meals. Whereas on March 22, 1972, President Richard Nixon signed into law a measure that amended the Older Americans Act of 1965 and established a national nutrition program for seniors 60 years and older. Whereas the Meals on Wheels Association of America established the National March for Meals campaign in March 2002 to recognize uh, the historic month, the importance of the Older Americans Act senior nutrition programs, and raise awareness about senior hunger in America. And whereas the 2014 observance of the March for Meals campaign provides an opportunity to support senior nutrition programs that deliver vital and critical services by, no, uh, excuse me, by donating, volunteering, and raising awareness about senior hunger. And whereas Independent Living Inc., a multi-service nonprofit organization based in Dane County, has provided senior meal programs since its founding in 1973, and has provided the county's only evening meals on wheels program since 1989. And whereas Independent Living Inc., volunteer drivers, uh, volunteer drivers for the evening meals on the wheels program, and they donate hundreds of hours of service each year. They're the backbone of the program. They deliver nutritious meals to homebound seniors and adults with disabilities, as well as an important safety check on their well-being. And whereas Independent Living Inc. is committed to alleviating hunger among older adults, regardless of their ability to pay for a meal, and whereas a nutrition meal helps seniors and adults with disabilities avoid premature or unnecessary inst institutionalization. And whereas Independent Living Inc. has asked our community to contribute to the cost of a meal and or become an evening meals on wheels volunteer during the month of March. Now therefore be it resolved that I, John Holcomer, Mayor of the City of Verona, do hereby proclaim March 2014 as Independent Living Meals on Wheels March for Meals Month in the City of Verona and I invite all citizens to join me in honoring Independent Living Inc. and all of their supporters and volunteers. And the proclamation will be signed today, uh, the 10th day of March, 2014. Now, as I indicated before, um, I have read these proclamations in the past, and every time I read one of these, and the age 60 years and older come up, I think about how much closer I'm getting to that. So I just celebrated a birthday recently, and I'm 58, so I'm getting very close. Um, I have participated in, in this program in the past, and uh, one of the things that I've heard from individuals when you, when you deliver the meals is that in many instances, um, that is their only contact with people during the day, and sometimes for several days in a row. So the, these volunteers, the people that provide the meals, are a very important part of these people's lives. 
uh, they monitor their well-being. They certainly, they, they talk to their caregivers or talk to uh, other uh, medical providers if necessary, if they notice something going on. Um, and as we all know, that if people desire to live in their own homes, as long as we can allow people to live in their own homes, um, it's, it's the right thing to do, number one. But secondly, it's a lot cheaper for us as, as a society, as an estate, as a nation, rather than have them in institutions. So it's critically important that we check on them. It's critically important that uh, we make sure that they're getting uh, sound meals. So with that, I was happy to read the proclamation. Uh, we do have uh, Sue Berg, who is the marketing and sales director for Independent Living with us this evening. And uh, Ms. Berg would like to say a few words. So Ms. Berg, if you would. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate very much the proclamation and the recognition for independent living. We are a nonprofit group. We are 40 years old, and we're very proud to offer the only evening Meals on Wheels program in Dane County. So it's certainly a service that we provide in Verona, and I appreciate working with the Senior Center in Verona as well and making sure seniors have an opportunity for meals, whether it's the noon meal or it's the evening meal, something that people often don't realize about an evening meals program that does make it a little bit distinct from the noon program other than the time of day, is that our programs don't get federal funding and we don't get state funding where the other programs do. So we have to do our own fundraising and we do our own friend raising, which is where the volunteers really make a huge difference. And Mayor, thank you so much for acknowledging what the volunteers do because without them, this program just doesn't succeed, whether it's an evening program or a noon program. So thank you very much for the proclamation and the recognition. And if you have a little time in your hearts and in your cars, I encourage you to volunteer for Meals on Wheels. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Here. Yes, uh, Ms. Doyle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was just wondering, and I'm not sure if you can answer this, Sue, but who sh should we just get in contact with you if people have some time to volunteer or to make donations? What's the best way to go about that? Three, thank you. There are three very easy so ways. If you, if them. you would please come to the podium. There are three very easy ways to, to volunteer or your time or your resources. One is to get in touch with me and I am with Independent Living. Our phone number is 274-7900, and we also have a website. It's independentlivinginc.org. Another way is just to call the phone number I gave you, 274-7900, and explain what you'd like to do, and we'll connect you with the appropriate person. And on our website, there is a volunteer page, and there is a donor page. You can go right to that. Thank you. I just handed Mr. Burns your card, so he will make sure that he emails it to everyone on the council, and if anyone else uh, is interested in serving, uh, they can contact the city for your number. That'd be great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes the mayor's report for this evening, so we will move to the administrator's report. Mr. Burns, please. Yes, thank you, I have a few updates this evening. Uh, first, there's going to be a public information meeting on the County Highway M reconstruction project. Uh, that meeting is going to take place this Wednesday, the 12th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Verona Senior Center. And this project includes the reconstruction of the southern segment of County Highway M uh, from the city of Verona extending north uh, through the county PD intersection and up to the Midtown Road intersection. There's going to be a brief presentation at 6 p.m., uh, followed with an open house format where people can talk with city staff, uh, staff from Madison, Dane County, and the engineer that are working on the project. We'll also um, have some information on our website, and as we get additional concepts for the intersection at M and PD, uh, we'll have those available on the website as well for anyone that can't attend the meeting. Uh, also on the 12th, there's going to be a meeting of the Dane County Cities and Villages Association. Uh, that is going to be a noon meeting at the uh, city of DeForest. And some of the topics included on the agenda for this meeting, including a discussion about the status of the DaneCom radio system, uh, the status of the Dane County 911 Center, and also a discussion about the Capital Area Regional Planning Commission, including the item that we had discussed uh, previously about uh, the potential inclusion of fees uh, for service within the CARPC budget. Uh, I'll be attending the, the meeting and uh, Mayor Hokemer attending as well, and we'll report back uh, on the discussion at that meeting. 
Uh, last Friday, there was scheduled to be a hearing on a motion for summary judgment in the matter involving the City of Verona with the Fire Department Tom hiring process and a lawsuit filed by the IAFF union. Uh, the judge did postpone that hearing. Uh, that has been rescheduled until April 24th. Uh, the judge had indicated that he was looking for more time to review the briefs and the materials from both parties. And again, I'll keep the council updated as there's any ad additional action on that pending lawsuit. Uh, also for the fire department related to the uh, fire station design process, uh, there was an open house that was held at the current fire station. Uh, we do have materials from that open house available on the city website if anyone was interested but unable to attend. The architect is continuing to meet with staff uh, from fire, EMS, and administration to work on the detailed design process. Uh, we are looking to schedule another ad hoc committee meeting the last week of March. Uh, additional information will be coming out on that shortly. And then we're anticipating that that item would uh, come back to the uh, council and plan commission as there are additional details on the design. And then finally, a uh, reminder that the spring election is coming up on April 1st, and absentee voting will be beginning uh, next week, starting March 17th in the office and running through March 28th. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Burns this evening? I'm not seeing any. Thank you, Bill. Uh, next on the agenda, we normally have the engineer's report. Um, I've been told that Mr. Gunlock is not feeling well this evening, and uh, we will supply a written uh, report um, very soon. So with that, we will move to committee reports, and we will begin with the plan commission. Mr. Yours, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under um, 9A1 um, is an ordinance adopting the Downtown Verona Mobili Mobility and Development Plan as an amendment to the City of Verona Comprehensive Plan. Uh, to give the overview and a presentation, um, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Valerius from MSA, as well as Adam and Mr. Sayer uh, from the City of Verona. Thank you. Jason, go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, the presentation I'm going to run through tonight is uh, largely similar to one that I did for Plan Commission last month, uh, but with a few, uh, a few additions uh, and, and adjustments. What I wanted to be sure we do tonight in the few minutes that we cover, use to cover the, the plan draft, is to um, provide enough of the background and a little bit of a glimpse into the data behind some of the recommendations, um, because I don't know that we uh, did that adequately uh, before plan commission. So I want to be sure we, uh, we, we do that tonight. A couple of things uh, before we get to that, though, is uh, just a quick rundown of the schedule that this project took and the, the course that it took. We started about uh, uh, 14, 15 months ago, end of uh, 2012. Our first committee meeting was in uh, February of 2013. And uh, there were a series of public meetings, uh, four public meetings last year um, in the course of uh, putting this plan together. And th we had, of course, the uh, Plan Commission public hearing last month with a, with a second meeting uh, last week uh, when the recommendation was made uh, to approve this plan with a couple changes. Uh, to go over briefly what the vision is, I do think it's worth reading the vision statement. Uh, downtown Verona is the center of the community, a vibrant destination for residents and visitors. The downtown has grown with the city, adding more places to live, work, shop, and eat, yet it has retained a small town feel. Businesses are thriving. New parking lots and other improvements have eased congestion, and a series of sidewalk and streetscape improvements have made the entire area inviting, attractive, and recognizably downtown. And there are, in, there are a few core objectives listed there, uh, talking about managing traffic, providing parking, improving pedestrian and biker, comfort and safety, uh, facilitating investment and development, and um, establishing a consistent streetscape character throughout the downtown area. Something that I thought was important to add uh, to try to take a step back and ask why was this plan initiated and what is the intent of this plan? What does a lot of this stuff ultimately boil down to? Um, a good chunk of our effort was uh, went into evaluating the traffic situation and uh, what space you have right now to accommodate traffic, uh, what growth may come in terms of traffic flow from various places that is uh, coming to downtown Verona um, and then making decisions about how and to what extent to attempt to accommodate 
that traffic as it continues to grow. So uh, there are uh, sp specific uh, items in here addressing how much right of way for various streets um, or for various portions of Main Street and Verona especially and also uh, some other street improvements and the intent is not necessarily uh, though there is a schedule in here we'll get to it the intent is not necessarily to say you need to do these things on this schedule the most important thing is to decide which areas you're going to protect from development, where you're going to allow buildings to be located or not located so that those that come after you have options. That's really what this boils down to. You want the develop you want development to be able to occur with the confidence that those hundred year buildings that you hope are going to be built, that you're building good buildings that are going to last a hundred years, those buildings wouldn't need to be torn down because a few, the, the next generation really feel something else has to be done with traffic. You would like those 100-year buildings to still allow you the flexibility to make decisions uh, about how much street to provide or not provide. To hit a couple numbers briefly, um, traffic is projected to increase. I picked one uh, segment of your downtown network, North Main Street. Uh, the Average daily traffic, uh, more or less right now, is around 11,400 vehicles. And the peak hour, uh, which is the evening commute, uh, 445 to 545, is about 1,162 vehicles. Uh, by 2035, uh, those are each projected to go up by over 80%. Um, and that's due to your own growth and the growth around you. Um, the modeling was done by uh, a, a firm we worked with, SRF, who really specializes in using the regional model to uh, evaluate what may happen with traffic in the future. Uh, briefly, this is a snapshot of existing conditions showing current delays in that PM peak hour, that evening commute. And so um, on Main Street, you're seeing delays if you're trying to go north to the main Verona intersection of uh, about a minute and a half and traffic's backing up 800 feet. Uh, trying to come southbound, it's uh, over two minutes. Traffic is backing up about 1,000 feet, and you have uh, still some pretty significant backups, uh, but uh, to a lesser degree east and west. And this, the, the backups in terms of how far traffic backs up is something that we heard about consistently from the business community being a problem, uh, that people who have driveways in there, and it wasn't just business owners, but uh, them especially have more traffic and more need to get people in and out of those driveways, and that was a concern. So getting to the recommendations of the plan, uh, this central intersection was our primary focus, and the plan recommends two phases of improvement. One that you can do at any time and would likely occur within about five years that would add uh, turn lanes and queue depth in a few places so that you can get more traffic through there. Phase one wouldn't take out any buildings, but it would require some wide right of way acquisition. And then a phase two uh, would add a second through lane in every direction uh, to accommodate the continued growth. And phase two, when that would happen, is uh, you know as soon as 15 years and as late as never because as a policy decision you may choose uh, never to add that much pavement to your downtown but the right-of-way assumptions that are in this plan are based on giving you the option of phase two uh, just to note fit what phase two would do to existing development uh, the X's indicate buildings that would have to come out to accommodate the right-of-way required uh, one more piece of data. Uh, right now, you've got anywhere from 45 second to uh, 135 second delays, uh, so over two minute delays in queues of 600 to 1,000 feet. When you do phase one, uh, you would uh, immediately bring that down to 30 second delays and 400 feet, foot queues. So you'd have a pretty good improvement. Uh, things would still be working pretty well for another 10 years. By the time you get to 2035, the intersection has kind of blown up again uh, and you're back where you are right now and worse um, 
because people can't get into the turn lanes anymore. And if at that point you were to choose to go ahead with phase two to add that additional capacity, uh, you would then bring things back down to uh, 60 second delays and, and 700 foot queues. So, uh, you know, still some pretty long queues, but manageable and not uh, a uh, uh, failing level of congestion as, as traffic engineers consider it. Uh, briefly, this uh, image of your traffic network illustrates a point that we have uh, been dealing with throughout this project, which is, as you know, there are not many alternative options for people that want to get to and through downtown. You're pretty much going to be on Main or Main Street or Verona Avenue. And uh, a, a few of the recommendations attempt to improve the flexibility of that grid. Uh, one of those uh, is a is connecting Silent Street. Uh, there was obviously a, quite a bit of uh, comment and opposition to this. Plan Commission recommended taking that out of the plan. Uh, another is the connection of Harriet Street. Uh, the cost benefit on this, as compared to Silent Street, is not as good, but this does improve the uh, alignment of streets and allow people who want to get from east of Main Street to west of Main Street uh, the ability to do that without having to actually drive onto Main Street in that area. The East Railroad Street realignment, which was mentioned by um, one of the public comments earlier, is uh, really more about safety than about uh, traffic efficiency, uh, but that is an awkward intersection that is dangerous, especially at uh, school release times where you have kids crossing and people making turning movements that conflict. Other improvements. Uh, the don't block the box is uh, kind of low-hanging fruit that I think everyone's on board with simply painting the pavement and putting up signs to remind people not to park, not to sit in front of driveways uh, when they're stopped at a light. And the Basswood Avenue connection to the middle school. This isn't uh, a suggestion that there be a through street uh, connecting Basswood to Main Street. It is about connecting uh, the parking lots on the school site to Basswood so that uh, people who are coming to that site from the west part of the community have the option of entering via Basswood instead of have needing to come onto Main Street. Um, other improvements, Paoli Street stoplight is something that uh, is, I think, desired, and as soon as there is traffic warrant to do it for any one movement, that can happen. Uh, and the Lincoln Street stoplight is something that I think is uh, already in, in the initial st planning stages right now uh, to be timed with improvements to your fire station uh, so that you are uh, making those improvements in concert. You don't have a lot of traffic on Lincoln, but it can be very difficult to get in and out of Lincoln when there's a lot of traffic on Verona, Ave, as you know. Uh, streetscaping improvements, uh, one of the things that we clarified through this planning process is where the downtown core begins and, and uh, so those are indicated really by the edges of the, the ends of the blue lines here um, on the east, west, north, and south. Uh, the intent being that those areas within there would get a uh, consistent streetscape treatment and that over time you would begin to establish gateway features of some, of some sort through landscaping and uh, signage to say, hey, welcome to downtown Verona. Uh, I have a few slides here just showing some of the, the, the streetscaping palette. You have different conditions. You don't need to make every piece of the downtown completely uniform and the same, uh, but you can work from this palette with different options that use the same materials in different ways so that it all hangs together and feels similar. Uh, so from where you have pretty tight conditions um, and then as you have more space, you have the flexibility to do more with, uh, with brick and with trees and things. Uh, the materials and the things that were heard from the community through the process were a desire to uh, use paving, to use hard materials on the terrace as opposed to try to have a strip of grass. Uh, so a desire to have some brick accents um, and certainly to have the street trees. Um, the lighting can be similar in design to what you have now on East and West Verona, but uh, not blue. So black instead of blue in the, in the downtown core. So there's the rest of the palette. Uh, crosswalks, um, most, of the, most of the recommendations are, uh, in the plan regarding crosswalks are kind of generalized, but uh, there are a couple places that we called out specific improvements. Uh, one is at, uh, uh, on West Verona at West Lawn, uh, where you are, have kids crossing to go to school, so uh, looking to improve safety there. And um, so this is a 
this one shows the general uh, crosswalk improvement intent uh, to use a different material where possible um, and where that isn't possible um, due to cost or other considerations to use something more than just the double white lines. Um, the other specific place that was called out on the plan for Im specific improvements is the um, crossing of the Military Ridge Trail. Uh, there are several parking improvements suggested that would be uh, city owned and city funded, uh, but that would not be in the public uh, street, most of them. Um, Park Lane and Franklin Street is, is the first one uh, recommended, and that is right here. And this would provide immediate relief to the adjoining businesses on South Main that uh, were, the, were the only businesses we specifically heard about parking concerns and parking problems right now. Um, the other projects here are all related to accommodating changes or improvements in the plan. So if you go to the south end, uh, this is the Church Street lot, and the intent of that is to accommodate the uh, proposed expansion of Hometown Junction Park, and also to provide some additional parking for any other any business growth in that area. Uh, the uh, In the northwest quadrant here behind Walgreens, that project is not going to add any spaces. It's simply a realignment uh, to accommodate, help to accommodate Walgreens parking when changes to the main Verona intersection would take away some of their parking should you finally ever get to phase two. Um, the northeast quadrant is almost entirely about accommodating the loss of parking on street parking that you have right now and also accommodating uh, loss to the older building at the corner there, 101 North Main, which uh, e even in their phase one improvements is going to lose some of its parking area um, because of the need for right-of-way to get turn lanes in there. And then the northernmost project identified in this plan is for Harriet Street. Uh, that one is actually part of the right-of-way, but the idea there is that if and when you should connect Harriet Street so that East and West Harriet Street align, the resulting development site that's going to be left um, where your library currently is, is pretty tight. And so to allow for um, an, a nice building there with, uh, with um, of a size that you would like to have as a gateway feature as opposed to something small and low slung, uh, you're going to need some additional on-street parking in a perpendicular format instead of parallel. Quickly then talking about redevelopment projects, uh, as I noted there is one public redevelopment project and that is the uh, proposed expansion to Hometown Junction Park. There are then a whole bunch of private projects illustrated it is not the intent of this plan to say uh, this is what those projects are look, going to look like, but rather simply to illustrate what's feasible and what might happen there. Uh, so there are uh, potential projects identified up and down Main Street. On West Verona, um, out at Legion Street, there are projects suggested on the north and south sides. And on East Verona, this entire uh, block at the corner of East Verona and Lincoln Street, uh, just up the road here, uh, is a potential redevelopment site. Commercial to the front, residential to the back is, is the suggestion. What perhaps is more important than uh, those illustrations, what's definitely more important than the illustrations, is uh, the guidelines that this plan would establish for any development. Uh, and these guidelines come out of what um, we heard from the public and uh, what we then further discussed with the uh, steering committee based on what we heard from the public. Uh, there is a pretty uniform desire to cap development at two or three stories in height uh, to keep your small town feel. Uh, five to foot Five to 15 foot setbacks are desired. Uh, pretty much no one really wants buildings right at the back of the sidewalk, uh, but still close enough to maintain a, a, a downtown feel. And uh, consistent with that, parking would be in the side yards and rear yards, a new development as opposed to in the front yard between the building and the street. Uh, a few more specific things. Uh, you have downtown design standards right now, and the plan recommends that you amend those uh, first to allow buildings to be parallel to Verona Ave. That's one kind of oddball specific thing that's in there that say they have to f line up with the east-west uh, 
east-west alignment, um, eliminating the 40% maximum building coverage standard uh, because in your downtown setting, you really can't accommodate that on a lot of sites reasonably and get a good building, and identify a downtown core area uh, with unique standards for it that are basically uh, smaller in terms of the setbacks required than in the areas that are further out that have bigger sites. Uh, one other item, and this relates, if I can briefly go back to this 40% maximum building coverage standard. Um, toward the end of the process, we realized that there's another way that you can achieve the flexibility that you would like property owners and developers to have in the downtown area, and that is to um, allow that area to be zoned uh, downtown commercial and, in fact, to proactively rezone much of it downtown commercial uh, so that uh, you are primed for development, and that recommendation to do that is in this plan. Briefly, the implementation plan uh, attempts to set a schedule and suggest priority for these uh, projects, and uh, obviously you will do them as you feel you have the money and the political wherewithal to proceed with projects, but uh, many of them are, in theory, um, possible to go ahead with in the short term. Uh, the zero to two years. Uh, we crossed out Silent Street there, but um, pedestrian improvements um, and some of the parking lots in that first couple of years. Um, a little bit of a medium range. Stage one, Main and Verona intersection uh, falls into here, uh, and uh, a couple more of the uh, street realignments and parking lots. And then the longest range is uh, when we would expect any uh, phase two to occur such that you're adding that second through lane of capacity to North Main and East Verona um, all the way out of downtown. So um, that's summary of the plan and of course it'll be available for questions. Thank you Jason. Mr. Yours? Um, if I could just finish with a summary of the plan commission um, discussion. We did we did have um, the public hearing that was required on February 3rd, but then also had additional comments from the public on the March, March 3rd meeting as well. Uh, and the Plan Commission recommended the adoption of the Downtown Verona Mobility and Development Plan with the following condition, that uh, both Silent Street extension and bike path extension for Silent Street shall be removed from the plan, which was stated. Um, and I, I personally would like to see that stay in the plan or uh, removed from the plan. So you know, I made the motion to take it out. Uh, and especially after hearing from the large amount of Verona residents that came to support it, uh, you had large numbers from the church come, but not only from the church, you had uh, lacrosse and football, um, many others. And so I think we need to heed, heed that call and, and take that out of the plan. Um, also, I, th I think that this plan does have a lot of good points to it, and we have an opportunity to grow our downtown, but this must proceed with citizen involvement. Um, and I would like to see us have another course of action of, of public meetings, much like we did last summer, um, to, to work together as a community to figure out where we want to prioritize. What do Verona residents see as that downtown core? How do they want to move forward? Um, and that we make sure that everyone knows that when we adopt this plan, if we adopt this plan, um, it's just that it's, it's, it's options. Um, it's not saying we're going to do this or that or the other thing. Um, I agree with the mayor when he made comments at the, at the um, plan commission that, you know, I won't support any eminent domain uh, whatsoever. Uh, I, we won't ask any Verona residents to move their businesses. We won't ask um, you to leave your homes. Um, that, that's not my plan at all. Uh, I think we have a good base of business in the downtown, and I only want to see us grow and add to that um, and make our Main Street walkable and convenient and offer residents more of an opportunity to come together as a community. Um, so I would urge all of us to support this plan, um, but I also look forward to the discussion that we're going to have tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairs. The plan is before us. Uh, there, there is potential action. There is also discussion on the plan. Mr. Steiner. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to vote no on this tonight uh, for three reasons that have surfaced in my visits around the district on the, the northern section of the District 3. 
Um, one of the biggest concerns is this realignment of East Harriet and West Harriet will change a way of life for several residents in that area. And people just can't see how that's going to benefit the congestion of the north-south traffic. And of course, the school traffic is brought in on that conversation, but these people are worried about their lives in that area. The, the next one that is a strong concern, you heard a little bit of it tonight on the East Railroad Street, uh, the West Railroad people are very concerned too. There, there's a, a couple of businesses there that I would think would be very concerned. It may affect their business and and uh, a manufacturing company there that, uh, you know, oh yeah, I'll move, but the city's going to have to pay to do it. Um, they, they've been there a long time. They hire a lot of people and they're happy down there. Those people like working down there and they can walk over to the businesses in downtown and have lunch and and uh, you close that off, that might cause some issues, especially if you do some other things there. And the third one is more of the religious nature, um, the Baptist Memorial Church. Uh, those people, they've been there a long time. They've been a part of our downtown. And I wish I knew how many of those people, when they come to their services or their programming or their Awana programming for their youth, how many of them actually stop and, and visit and shop and spend their money in our downtown. And, and this plan has them being abolished and moved to make room for, a, well, about 12 years ago, there was a group of people who wanted to put a hotel down there. Well, let's move the, the church to the south side of town. Let's put a four-story hotel in there. Parking, businesses on the bottom. Well, those people, they want their church to stay there. They like it there. I saw a video at the Verona Historical Society about their history. <laughs> they love it. They don't want to change. So we got to be very careful about changing the culture of our city for those three reasons, if we accept this. And... Uh, I told those people I would have a strong voice on this. You've heard it, and I will vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Other comments, questions, potential actions? Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just have a few comments, a, a few observations, um, a couple points that I think are important to make. As I was reading through this plan, you know, I think uh, it's easy to get really excited about uh, the idea of having development and redevelopment in downtown and, and making downtown a, 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 an even more vibrant uh, place for the, for the people of our city to enjoy and, and um, the idea of having more places to shop in Verona and places to, to go have a meal with your family in Verona I think is is something that, that many of us, if not all of us, support. W what I struggle with is how much does this cost? And what will be the obligation of Verona property taxpayers to make it happen? And even if we make these investments, will the development happen? Which I think is a, f a fair question. Um, one of one of the things that that I was very pleased to to read about in the in, in the newspaper and what I heard Mr. Years say that I want to commend both the mayor and Mr. Years on saying is that we're not going to use eminent domain to take any property owner off their property uh, to 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 execute this plan and I I, I think that's really important because I, I I think we all have an obligation to respect people's private property rights. Um, and yet at the same time, that being said, there's a lot in this plan that requires wholesale changes in property from existing property owners. And I just struggle as I read through this, you know, wanting to be supportive of downtown development and redevelopment. 
how do we actually make it happen? And I'm not sure this plan really gives us that path forward. I, I, see, a bu I see guidelines. I see some ideas. Um, but when I think of the, what we heard during public comment from, from Mr. Curtis, uh, what we heard from Mr. Rudolph, um, you know, which I've re both of whom I, I respect, and and I, I you know, I want to be supportive of the Chamber of Commerce, but I don't know how much in this plan is 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 really actionable. I mean, what we heard was, we want you to move forward and and take action, and and it's 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 difficult for me to 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 wrap my mind around what that means with this kind of a plan, because I don't I don't see enough meat on the bones to really execute what's in here other than some road improvements which when I look at just the cost of the Verona Avenue and Main uh, portion of it we're looking at 10 to 12 million dollars um, I don't know when we'd necessarily do that if we'd ever do it but um, that's an awful lot of money that's an awful lot of money for a city that's about to build a fire station. And I, I, I so badly want to be supportive of this plan and to see downtown Verona grow uh, and develop. But as I sit here this evening, I just don't know that I have enough questions answered about how we really do that. Um, I think that the, the, the most important part of this plan, in, in, in my judgment, is that it, it makes some recommendations about how we can improve the flow of traffic in the downtown area. And I do think that that's critically important because I, I, I really view the congestion that we have, particularly in the, in the evening rush hour, as a barrier to people in this community traveling downtown. I can tell you that even if we were able to build some restaurants downtown or some additional shopping opportunities downtown, if we have the same traffic problems in places we have right now, it's going to be a reason to not go there. Uh, I, think that's a, I think that's happening right now. Uh, there are times of the day where I will not go to Miller's because it is too difficult to get there and get in and out of the parking lot. I'll wait until later in the evening. And it would, it would be a lot more convenient if I could do that on my way home from work at 5.30, but, but you just can't do it. And I think that that's such a critical piece of this that if, if we want to create an atmosphere where people want to be downtown, we've got to create it an opportunity for them to get there easily and not make it difficult on them. Um, and I'm just, I'm just not sure we can afford to do that at the moment because in my, in my judgment, we've got to add significant lane capacity to make that happen. Um, I don't want to take anything away from uh, the, the folks at MSA um, who, who did a lot of really, really you know, solid work on this, but if I could, if I could go southbound on Highway M uh, at 5:30 and only have to wait, uh, you know, 120 or 130 seconds, I'd be, I'd be pretty happy. Um, but that doesn't happen real often on a on a weekday for me. So I guess those are the points I wanted to make. Um, they're points that I had ask everybody to consider. I think they're important, and, and I, I, I think at, at this point, I, as much as I would really, really like to support a downtown development plan, I don't think I can support this one as it's written. I do want to thank the Plan Commission for the work that they did and for removing the Silent Street um, uh, roadway and and uh, bicycle path, and I think that's a that's a great example of of being being willing to listen. So, credit to the to the plan commission for doing that. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Manley. Other, Mr. Diaz? Uh, I had two questions for um, the consultants. Um, one, how much flexibility do we have with the um, P5 Church Street parking lot um, if, say, somebody wanted to redevelop it as a business or something else? I mean, would that require, if the plan went forward, how it is with the zoning changes, and it wasn't a parking lot, it was a business instead, would that require any changes from the city? So you're asking if someone were to propose a development on that site? Yeah, like a commercial or something. Sure. Um, the question then would be, I, I think the assumption you're, you may be making there is, and you still want to go ahead with the park. Because those the because the, the this lot is especially tied to that park with the intent that you can do more and accommodate more people downtown uh, without impacting the businesses that currently have parking, especially Millers. Um, to a lesser degree, this this uh, lot is intended to support other infill uh, flexibility for other infill commercial. Um, but I guess my bottom line would be. Uh, if you want development on this site and a park, you're going to need to find someplace else to accommodate the occasional influx of cars. If you don't, if you decide to take the park improvement out of the plan or ignore that, then I would say you could accommodate development on this site and it wouldn't be a big concern as long as that development itself is providing its own needs on site. Gotcha. Uh, uh, and my second question is, how much traffic does West Railroad see, like low, medium, high? My apologies if I missed it. I didn't. So. We didn't get counts on West Railroad, uh, but it's it's pretty light. It doesn't really go anywhere. I mean, there's some business. There's a couple of businesses there, but it's not a through street, so it's it's light. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Ms. Toyle. Um, I appreciate some of the the very specific comments that the other alders have gotten into, but. Um, I guess what I see as the kind of redeeming quality of this plan is that it does kind of give this overview and options um, where we can avoid some situations that have led to a need for this plan and so much controversy over needing grid connections and things of that nature. Um, and I think this plan is just to avoid issues like having a park bank on the corner or having streets that are not connected in the future. So I do appreciate it in that respect. Um, and I believe that going forward, this will be helpful in future development and can guide small configurations that will improve life in downtown. As a resident living right on Main Street, I, I would look forward to seeing some improvements over at the Paoli intersection. Um, and I did have one question. I wasn't there for the entire plan commission meeting, so I'm not sure if the mayor or Mr. Yours has more information on this, but I understand the actual street connection not working with Silent Street and know that there is a path um, that kids from the, the high school and junior high use to get over to the library now. But what was the major concern with making that an actual bike path as opposed to just, <coughs> I believe it's, it's just paved right now or? Mr. Years? Well, I think part of the path um, is just kind of beaten down by feet. Um, and you can, you can see it. Um, and actually, Father Vernon did mention for the path that part of it that the church would be willing to help pave, correct me if I'm wrong, but would be help willing to pave that so it would connect into the cemetery, which would then connect back down to um, Main Street. But I think the largest concern was, was with the proximity to the, to the Catholic cemetery. Um, and with the church's plans to expand their cemetery. Um, and, you know, I heard a lot, of, a lot of people make heartfelt comments about um, that cemetery and wanting to make sure that, you know, we respect the families who currently have loved ones in the cemetery, but also those who, um, and not to be morbid, but foresee themselves being placed in that cemetery. They want to, um, a Catholic cemetery is, is very much in their hearts and, um, they love Verona. They want to. They want to be here as well. Um, the closest one. I'm. I'm not exactly sure where it was, but it, it's quite a ways. If you're not thinking Verona, um, Madison, yeah, Resurrection. Um, and so I think that's that's the main thing. Now, um, if years down the road, um, and you know the church is willing to work with the city, um, and we can make something happen, we need to make sure we have those conversations up front. Um, 
and I think we can still do that. It just doesn't necessarily have to be part of this plan. But I think if we go that route, it has to be in conjunction working uh, with the church and the city together. Other questions, comments? Potential motions, Ms. Riki? Um, along those same lines of working together, I was thinking that there needs to be more information in the plan about working with the school district to possibly realign some streets, because um, as was mentioned previously, and well, not tonight, but other nights in public comment, um, connecting Yano Street um, was brought up, and I don't see that anywhere in the plan. Maybe I missed it, but... Um, I'd, I'd like to look into that a little further, and I think that would mean rerouting some of the streets near the middle and high school on Main Street. And um, so I would just like to know what the plan is for taking action on that with the school district. And um, also just wanted to make sure that you strike all of the places that Silent Street is mentioned in the plan, because um, while well, I came across it specifically on page 75, um, but I'm sure there are other spots in there that um, it shows up, and I don't know if you can do like a, a search and just get it out of the whole thing <laughs> completely. Thank you. Mr. Manley? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I also uh, just wanted to add two more thoughts. One, um, there was in the, in the mobility plan, um, it's figure 2.37, and it's a Basswood Avenue connection to the um, to the high school area from from the west. Uh, I think that's that's a that's a that's actually a really good idea, and I think that that would alleviate a fair amount of of uh, after school, uh, before school and after school congestion associated with both the middle school and the high school for people coming from, from a westerly direction. And that's something that I think could be achieved um, at relatively low cost and have a, I think, probably a noticeable impact on uh, traffic on, on North Main Street. Um, the other thing I wanted to add is that um, there's been some discussion about um, building locations for new development and how close to the street should it be. And, uh, you know, one of, one of the thoughts I had is that we often think of downtown areas as having buildings very close to the street, and I think that's, that's desirable, but we, uh, we should be really careful about getting encroaching on what might become future right-of-way. And, you know, some of, the, some of the challenges we have with the Verona Avenue and, and, and Main Street intersection right now are because we built so close to the street and we may have better options if we had had not done that and so i i think you know i think in two weeks that's my last meeting on on city council because i'm not seeking re-election but my my plea to all of you is is when we're looking at development in the downtown area think carefully about what the future might hold and how close we should build to the street and what might be, a, what we might not, you know, what we might think of as being the street today, think of how it might be expanded in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Yers? Um, I also wanted to point out, I, I left this out earlier from the plan commission and just, you know, even though I do support the plan, I wanted to mention there were two who did vote no at the plan commission and I believe both members voted no due to uh, downtown parking. Um, I, I believe both of, those, both of them made that statement, um, but I wanted to let people know that there was some opposition to the plan. Uh, and having said that, uh, I would like to make a motion to um, approve Ordinance 14-839, adopting the Downtown Verona Mobility Plan and Development Plan as an amendment to the city's, City of Verona Comprehensive Plan. We have a motion by Mr. Yers. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Doyle. Mr. Yers, did you want to make any additional comments? I'm just thinking you may want to clarify in your motion, in your motion exactly what you're proposing. Um, yeah, I would like to include the, the plan commission recommenda recommendation to leave out both the street extension and bike path extension for Silent Street. 
Thank you for that clarification. We are open for discussion on the motion. Mr. Diaz? Uh, this is a question for Mr. Years. Um, what were the concerns about parking? Like too much, too little, that it's public, or? Um, I, I don't want to speak for the, for the two commissioners. Um, that wasn't something that they really expressed. Their what about parking that they did not like. They just said it was based around downtown parking. Um, so I don't want to speculate on their behalfs. Additional questions or comments on the motion? Mr. Baer? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, uh, you know, first I want to thank the uh, staff and Mr. Valerius who, who uh, have done a lot of good work on this and also the uh, members of the public who participated. I know there were many people attended the meetings and filled out surveys and it's, it's a, uh, a good thing that we've included that public input in this process and I hope that that continues. Um, and I, you know, I think Mr. Manley and Mr. Uh, uh, Steiner have provided some useful critiques of the plan and I, I don't want to pile on but I just want to mention a few things. Um, you know, we, we are growing. We're the fastest growing city in the state and planning is obviously essential and, and I think some of the numbers that Mr. Blarius went through in this uh, presentation particularly, particularly about traffic are something that we have to keep in mind as we, uh, as we discuss plans for uh, the North neighborhood, as we discuss plans for other residential and commercial developments. We have uh, a growth that's a, a very fa at a very fast rate and there's no signs that that's gonna slow down. In fact, it will probably increase, uh, their rate will. So, uh, you know, I, th I think that this process had a few flaws and I don't wanna place any blame or, or point any fingers, but I think some apologies are due to the church and are due to other property owners who have had uh, lines drawn across their property uh, without much explanation of what this plan actually is, which is this plan, as we saw in the vision, is a guideline for what we should do moving forward because we are growing and we do have to plan. Um, and I think as we do that, we have to keep in mind that we have to plan using the real Verona, using what actually exists rather than an imaginary Verona or a Verona that uh, you know, maybe could be in existence at some point if we spend the $20, 30000000 million that Mr. Manley mentioned. And I, you know, I, I always like in these kinds of things that you have to focus on goals, on projects that are manageable, achievable. You can't be afraid to dream. You have to dream about what Verona can be like 50 years from now. But I, I share some of Mr. Manley's concerns that there's not enough recommendations here that are actionable that will actually get us to a point of having a better downtown for the real Verona. And so that being said, I think there's also some useful recommendations. Um, I think the design standards are, are great. Uh, I, I like the, the few examples that we uh, saw of what other downtowns have done uh, with sidewalks, with streetscapes. I think the two to three stories recommendation is, is right on and I'm, you know, I think in my mind about other downtowns that have gone through transformations recently like Shorewood, which is a uh, suburb of Milwaukee that has two to three story mixed use developments all up and down Capitol Avenue and North Avenue, um, uh, Capitol and Oakland Avenue. And I think that there are examples out there of what Verona can be and, and we shouldn't be afraid to dream, but again, we have to focus on what's manageable. And, and I think that the, the zoning changes again, also a good idea, positioning buildings with the street, also a very good idea. Um, I'd like to see more, and I think this is echoing some of what Mr. Manley said, more in the action items of what the city can do to promote development, uh, to ease traffic concerns without uh, infringing on property rights and property ownership. And I'll support, the, I, I plan to support the plan, but I, I think that we may be best suited by taking a step back and thinking a little bit longer about some of these things and, and doing a little more work on what items are actionable for the real Verona. Um, and, and I think one important piece is what sort of mechanisms there are for implementing this plan moving forward. Um, there's a, a very brief mention of uh, public involvement in private development uh, with only a, a paragraph and I, you know, I could find the page and, and let me do that quickly. page 80 in the plan. You know, I think that there are certainly 
some things this city can do, the use of TIF, TIF districts, use of uh, uh, rezoning is something that we certainly can do, but there's not much mention of the use of the Community Development Authority, the Economic uh, Development Commission that exists that have been dormant for years, some of both of which I think have, or one of which has funding uh, to do this kind of work, to incentivize private development. Um, and that's something we obviously have to be very careful with, but it's something we should also consider using and including in this plan. So. Um, Again, I'd you know, like to thank the planners and, and the staff for, for this work, the Planning Commission also for the work that they did and for removing the Silent Street extension, which uh, that did a good service and uh, we're good to sit through the public comment that, that was uh, uh, given at, the, at both of their meetings. Um, but again, I think we have to focus on what's real for Verona uh, and, uh, and you know, again, thanks to the staff who's, who's done a lot of work on this. Thank you. Other questions, comments, Mr. Diaz? May I offer an amendment? Sure can. Um, thank you. I would like to amend um, the P4 Park Lane Shared Parking Lot section so that it only applies to the, the property that the city currently owns. We have a motion by Mr. Yours. Is there a second? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Diaz? Thank you, Dale. Is there a second to that motion? Not seeing a second. second. We do have a second. We are open for discussion on the motion, Mr. Diaz. Thank you. This is just a, a <clears throat> I'm offering this amendment for a couple of reasons. Um, I think we need to balance parking and businesses and residential. Um, we don't want to have the downtown be all parking or nobody's going to visit if there's nothing to visit. And we don't want to push um, neighbors out. Uh, people have cited the um, Monroe Street in Madison. I think that is offers some good examples for us. And I think that part of the reason Monroe Street is so successful is because it backs up onto residential neighborhoods and, and you kind of have like an integration between the two. Um, I know there's some concerns too about how actionable this plan is. And I think removing this part makes the plan more actionable because right now it's focused on only the part we own. And if we have to wait to acquire the property, which might never happen, um, then the parking lot might just never get done. And I know I and, and also Alder Stein, I've heard from residents there who don't want any parking lot at all and I feel like at least this is some kind of compromise if we reduce the size and it could also potentially reduce some of the cost of the plan to the city as well while still providing parking for those businesses. Mr. Manley. Yeah, um, yeah for I guess for my sake and for the sake of, of folks at home I didn't clearly hear what the motion was and, and so I'm having a hard time understanding precisely what you're proposing. <coughs> Mr. Diaz? Sorry, um, just to clarify, like currently right now the city owns, and I'm blanking on the address. Um, Adam, do you know? 102, yeah, 102. 102 Spark Street. Um, so the, the motion would be just to have the parking lot apply to 102, the, the place the city already owns. Because um, if, if I understand this correctly, it, it would require acquiring another house. We are on the amendment. So if there, are there questions on the amendment, questions or comments? Mr. Manley. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Diaz. Uh, just so that I understand, so what, you're, what you would propose to do is that the only parking changes in the plan would be located at, at 102 Park Street where the city owns property. So the, um, all of the other parking changes that for example, near Walgreens and, and oh. so forth, would not? Oh, sorry. Sorry if I wasn't clear. I, I just meant that for the, the P4 um, section, if you're looking at the plan. Um, oh, it, okay. Thank it, you. It, it would just I, be for parking. No, it wouldn't okay. be get rid of all the other parking. It would just Got be it. that part. Other questions or comments? Um, just a, a few comments that I have. First of all, well, I want to speak to the to the amendment, not to the full motion at this point. One of the concerns that I've heard over and over from the business community is that there's not parking. Uh, one of the things that I've heard recently is that we purchased the, the former Phil Salkin property just to appease a couple businesses. That's not the case. 
if we don't have the foresight as a city to create some parking, municipal parking in the downtown area, we are not going to see redevelopment of that area or, or a successful redevelopment of that area. We're certainly not going to have, and as I'm pounding on doors, I keep hearing people say they want new restaurants in the city. We're not going to have restaurants locate in the downtown of the city of Verona if there's no parking. So we have to have the vision. This is a plan. It's a guideline. It doesn't mean that we have to buy every piece of property that becomes available. But we have to have the vision and the foresight that when things do uh, become available, because we're not going to, as long as I'm here, use eminent domain to purchase property, that we have to have that ability to provide some, some additional parking. It's one of the major concerns in, our, in, in the downtown area. Now, we can't do everything with in, in the private sector. Some of it is going to have to be with the public sector, and the private sector is certainly not going to move forward unless the public sector, the city, steps up to the plate as well. So, we, you know, we've been criticized for a long time, and there's been, we've heard before, several other plans in the downtown area. Uh, when are we going to do something? This doesn't mean that we have to do something tomorrow and buy every piece of property that comes along. But we need additional parking in the city, in the downtown area. It, it, it's, a, it's a must if we want that area to develop. And I've mentioned before, uh, you take a, a city such as Cedarburg, they had parking problems. And as properties became available, they didn't make big, huge parking lots. They bought one piece of property or, or uh, two adjoining pieces of property and they made municipal parking lots. That's what they did. Helped out their downtown tremendously. So if we start limiting as to what we're going to do with parking, then we, might as well, then we might as well let this plan on the shelf. So either we're going to be serious about the downtown or not. And I certainly, I, I'm very serious about the downtown, but I've, as I have indicated before, um, the downtown's not going to survive on its own. We're going to need some other development on the periphery as well. But if we start limiting as to where and uh, where we're not going to buy properties if they become available, then the plan's a failure right now. Then we might as well not move forward. My comment. Additional comments, questions? Ms. Doyle? Um, I'd just like to echo your sentiment and say that I these are just options. It's not anything that's going to happen tomorrow. It's just we need to maintain options and continue to have foresight so that this truly is a plan that can be utilized in the future. I think, I think especially something that's already near so many existing businesses and existing areas for development would, would be, you know, cutting our noses off despite our face right away. So I agree with your sentiment, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Manley. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I want to echo what you and, and Ms. Doyle said. I, I think for there's, there's a lot of really good ideas in this plan and a lot of questions that I continue to have. Uh, but one thing that I think is indisputable is that if we don't have adequate parking downtown, we're not going to have a vibrant downtown, period. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm, as much as I would like to support you on your on your motion, Mr. Diaz, I, I'm just not going to be able to do that. Discussion on the amendment to the motion. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 All those uh, opposed say no. No. <laughs> so I think we only had, did we have one aye? Uh, Mr. Diaz, uh, voting aye. Motion fails. So we are back on the, on the main motion. Further discussion on the main motion? Mr. Baer? I, I just have a question for, uh, for the staff or Mr. Valerius on the, the Harriet Street connection on what, uh, I think the, the question was brought up, what benefit that would actually bring to uh, some of the traffic issues? So if you could address that. Sure. Uh, as I as I said at the Planning Commission meeting, uh, there would be a uh, modest benefit in connectivity, uh, you know, sort of improvement in the network to reduce turning movements. Um, you're not going to see 
much reduction in delays by this project. It doesn't create much of an alternative route for people. It just uh, is, a, is a modest improvement, an opportunity to correct a flaw in the network. Further questions or comments on the main motion? Mr. Diaz? Uh, two things. I'd like to ask for a roll call vote on this plan. Um, and then the second thing is, I'm, I'm, despite my failure to, to modify some of the things I don't like about it, I am in favor of the plan overall. I think that Rona is going to grow um, no matter what we do. Um, the whole county's growing, and, and Rona is growing specifically because, because of Epic. And maybe I'm biased, but I don't think that's a bad thing to have Epic growth. Um, and <clears throat> this plan will at least allow us to do some small things right away, show the business community that we're serious have plans in place uh, when businesses come to us and want to want to move forward. Um, additional commercial development will help diversify the tax base, take some of the burden off of residential homeowners, and, and, and really have a nice cohesive downtown that people can, can bike to, can walk to, can drive to, um, and just really kind of be like an engine engine for the, the region. I'm especially, I especially like the, um, the the setback and zoning changes that have been proposed i think that'll help matters greatly and, and i think it just it's not perfect but i, th I think it provides a, a blueprint going forward and i definitely want to take on the challenge that that some of the public speakers mentioned about don't don't put this study back on the shelf don't you know well i guess you didn't put it this way but i'll put it this way don't don't pat yourself on the back after tonight if it passes and, and, and assume you're done but but be ready to work with everybody and, and to work with the community. I, I think that the, one of the best things about this community plan has been the community the community input. I was uncomfortable from the get-go about Silent Street, but I don't know if I would have had the political strength to get it out of the plan by myself, but geez, with the amount of people that showed up, it, was, it didn't even get to the council. So I, I definitely appreciate that. I, I hear enough, enough complaints about the traffic on Enterprise without making like a little highway to it. Um, so I guess just in conclusion, I think this is a good plan and, and I plan to support it. Thank you. Other questions, comments, Mr. McGilvery? Thank you, Mr. Baird. Uh, I guess just one observation I would make. I, I've heard it mentioned uh, several times tonight about the potential or not having the potential of uh, eminent domain taking place as a, as a means to acquire any of these properties. And it seems to me the input I've received back from, from people that are is negative there are people out there whose properties would be adversely affected if some of these things were were done and uh, in, in order to you know assuage some of the the concerns people have concerning that I'm wondering if we might adopt language within to this this um, development plan that would say that it's it's the intent of the city not to use eminent domain uh, not to say that some of these things couldn't happen when when development wants to happen, I, I, I tend to believe that that's, that's really when most of these things will happen, not when we force it, when projects come to us. Uh, I think it's important to have this plan in place so that people can look at it and say, oh, that, that's what the city of Verona wants to do? I think we can make that work. Uh, I think that's when the development will happen. So I, I'm wondering if there isn't a mechanism we could put into place to, to uh, keep that con uh, those those concerns at bay uh, by business owners or residential property owners. Uh, I'm looking for a any input from staff uh, or even our, our consultants on this. I, I would say, and I, and I know Mac, and I appreciate what you're saying, but in the back of my mind, the first thing that that comes to me is that this council or no other council can bind any future councils. So, you know, I think we could say that, we could put that in the plan, and we could say that that's our intent, but the fact of the matter is we cannot bind any future councils. And, and I, I, I recognize that, Mayor, but I believe comments that were made concerning the Silent Street, there were former alders who were involved in that process, and, you know, it was their understanding that at least there was language and discussion that took place that said, uh, you know, Silent Street wasn't going to go through. Now, I, I recognize that there's some other uh, legal work that was done to, to see if there was, uh, if we had any rights to do anything at Silent Street, but the important part to me was there was something in place that that body at one point said, no, we will not pursue, you know, we won't pursue putting Silent Street through. Um, 
I think this body could certainly do it. That I agree with you. Uh, we all know we're up for elections every every couple of years, but I, I think it's important to to put it down in writing that that's not the city's intent, and uh, it may help people moving forward, uh, future bodies. Mr. Yours, then Mr. Manley. Um, I, I agree with Mr. McGilvery on this. Um, I think that this whole plan is, is trying to develop a culture, or not develop a culture. I, I want to keep stopping myself from saying that. It's, it's continuing a culture um, of hometown USA and the, and the values that go along with that. And I think laying down that intention in writing um, is an important step in maintaining that culture and in continuing it as well. Um, so I, I would agree to put something down in writing. Mr. Manley? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it, I totally agree. This council or no, you know, can't bind a future council. But I think what Mr. McGilvery is asking for really is to put comfort language in this proposal, so that anybody who's looking at it, um, who hasn't had the benefit of being here tonight or watching the proceedings uh, on TV or attending the plan commission can look at this document that has a street running through their property or a apartment uh, development or a commercial development on top of their home that weren't nobody's intending to use eminent domain to take their property in order to make this happen. And I, I think that that's a good idea. That's something I'd support doing as well. Okay. Mr. McGillivray? I'd like to thank the alders for, for uh, doing a better job of explaining exactly what I was trying to say. Uh, a little tired today, but I, I really do believe that that, that I'm sure there are people who are living in those homes or, or owning those businesses right now who are thinking they're offended by it. And I think Mr. Bear um, mentioned it earlier, and, and that's not that is not how the city wants to develop a positive relationship with the people that we would hope we would be helping. So if, if we can find any way to make that uh, more palatable to people, but also recognize that the people who are saying no right now may change their mind in, in 10 years and say, this works well for me because they have a private investor who comes in and, and says they'd like to invest in the property based on this plan. And, and they may think it's a great idea at that time, but uh, if we can find a way to get that language in, I'd be much more apt to support it. Thank you. Other comments? Um, I was just having discussions with Mr. Burns, and um, he indicated that he could come up with some language and with some further explanation here. I think as long as we make it clear and the minutes reflect that it was the intent, you know, not that we, because we cannot bind any future councils. As long as we clarify that, that it was the intent of the council at the time when we made this decision, then, you know, then, then I'm fine with that. But we needed to, Mr. Burns? I, yeah, I, I was just uh, considering some language that the body could consider, and, and perhaps uh, one way to approach this would be, you know, that the plan, uh, if goes forward, would be adopted with the, the recommendation from this body that the city not use eminent domain in a situation that would require the loss of a building or a business um, at, without the, uh, inter or the involvement of the owner or against the owner's uh, consent. Uh, I, I would first say it should be as a recommendation as we've discussed and also we may not want to just you know say that we would never use eminent domain in any situation but perhaps limit it to a situation where a building or a business would be lost uh, just to provide flexibility if there is a, a small piece of right away or utility connection or something like that that doesn't require the loss of a building or business that that could be considered if needed thank you bill other additional comments or questions miss ricky I just wanted to clarify that the eminent domain ability would still exist and that that should be clear in the language because I know of one person who um, is very interested in the city using that <laughs> so that she can get rid of her property. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it can go, there's, you know, flip side to every coin. So um, just to make sure that there's not like some financial, um, you know, benefit or loss for the city or the resident um, if eminent domain can not be used. So I just wanted to clarify that it's still an option even though the intent to use it is not there. 
think I think that's what intent means. Uh, Mr. Burns. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add. I, I think the city uh, could, as a, a policy decision, make the recommendation that they would not acquire a property against the owner's consent in certain circumstances and still would have the ability to to work with a property owner that voluntarily wishes to sell. Uh, we likely would still have to follow some components of the eminent domain law just to provide required notices to property owners. Uh, even when we purchased the property at, at 102 Park Lane, there were certain items that we needed to provide information and disclosure to protect the rights of the property owner, even if our intent would be that if we can't reach a negotiated purchase that we would not proceed any farther. Mr. McElroy? So, so Mr. Mayor, I would ask the, the, the first and the second on the original motion if they would be uh, amenable, amenable to having that uh, amendment in the language. How would we adopt the language and what would the language look like, I guess, would be my second question to the, the first. Mr. Burns is going to write something up here. Uh, while yours, would, would that, does that seem reasonable to the original motion? Yeah, I, uh, like, like I said, I, I support the idea. Um, and as long as we get some language that works for the for city staff as well, um, I'm more than happy to accept it as a friendly amendment. Mr. Diaz? This is just a point of order. I'm actually totally in favor of the amendment, but you can't offer friendly amendments to a motion once it's been part of the body. You could ask for unanimous consent to add it, but I think since I think everyone's in favor of it, we could just have somebody offer it as an amendment and then vote on it to, to follow procedure. That is the uh, correct way to do it according to Robert's Rules of Orders. Just give Bill a, <laughs> the cameras are on Bill, all eyes are on Bill. Well, I'll save a little time later if it's all right, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, <laughs> since we won't be meeting on Monday. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Burns? That's the uh, potential language uh, that I have. It, it would be indicate that the intent of the council uh, adopting the plan should the plan be adopted uh, that the city not use eminent domain to acquire a property <coughs> resulting in the loss of a building or business without the owner's consent if that is acceptable language I would accept the motion to that effect to amend the main motion mr. McGilvery so moved we have a motion by mr. McGilvery is there a second 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 by mr. Diaz we are open for discussion on the on the amendment mr. bear just point of order could we have it read one more time sure can Yes, indicate that the intent of the council in adopting the plan is that the city not use eminent domain to acquire property resulting in the loss of a building or business without the owner's consent. You've heard the motion, you've heard the second, we've had discussion. This is on the amendment to the main motion. All those in favor signify by Mr. Manley, I'm sorry. Mr. Manley? Um, just, I don't want to complicate things. I th think we spent a lot of time on this, but I think this is worth getting right. And I, I, I'd like for us to consider adding, uh, we talk about uh, taking a, a building, but um, what I'd like to add to that is that, the, that we are not intending to take um, action that would limit their use of their property. Because I think Just it's very possible for a government to use eminent domain to do something that renders the use of somebody's property essentially useless even if you're not tearing a building down. Mr. Burns? Yeah, I, I think if you wanted to include that, um, perhaps a way to do that would be um, to, to have the following statement. Um, indicate the intent of the council adopting the plan is that the city would not use eminent domain to acquire property resulting in the loss of a building or business or that would limit the use of a property without the owner's consent. So we were with Mr. Manley's comments and with Bill rereading that, we are clarifying the motion. All those in favor of the motion to amend signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. We are on the main motion now as amended. Is there further discussion on the main motion? Further discussion on the main motion? 
Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. This is a roll call vote has been requested. Ms. Lynch, if you'd read the roll, please. Alderperson Baer? Aye. Alderperson Diaz? Aye. Alderperson Doyle? Aye. Alderperson Manley? No. Alderperson McGilvery? Aye. Alderperson Rieke? Aye. Alderperson Steiner? No. Alderperson Yours? Aye. And the motion passes on a six to two vote and we'll let the minutes reflect that Mr. Manley and Mr. Steiner voted no. The motion passes. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate all the, the work you've done on this. Mr. Yours? Thank you. Um, on the long awaited 9A2. Um, <coughs> This would be our resolution R-14-005, approving a conditional use permit to allow for the expansion of the Wisconsin Brewing Company's outdoor seating patio area located at 1079 American Parkway. Um, and I want to reserve my motion uh, for after the discussion. Okay. Thank you. So if I may just go right into the... Go ahead. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Yours. Uh, the proposed conditional use permit would allow the Wisconsin Brewing Company to expand their outdoor seating and patio area located at 1079 American Parkway. In October of 2012, the city approved the site plan to, re to construct the brewery and a conditional use permit allowing an outdoor seating and patio area. To provide better use of the outdoor space, the applicant is requesting to expand the, outdoors, the outdoor to allow for outdoor special events, music, and entertainment. The brewery has requested the following hours of operation for the outdoor area. Sunday through Thursday, allow music between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., with outdoor operations ending at 11 p.m., and Friday and, Saturday, Friday and Saturday, allow music between the hours of 8 a.m. and 11 p.m., with outdoor operations ending at midnight. Uh, the Planning Commission has uh, discussed this, um, with, along with some public comment. Uh, the Planning Commission held the required public hearing on March 3rd and recommended approval of the conditional use permit with the following conditions. First, that the outdoor patio fencing shall be a minimum of 48 inches tall. Second, the alcohol consumption shall be limited to the fenced area as shown on the site plan or inside the brewery, and all areas where alcohol is consumed shall be monitored by staff. Three, the fence and gate for the outdoor patio shall comply with the requirements from the fire department, police department, and building inspector. Four, the applicant, applicant and property owner agree to enter into a property use agreement with the city to allow for the use of the city property by the Wisconsin Brewing Company. Five, city staff will review the hours of operation each fall and determine if modifications are needed to the hours. If staff believes modifications are necessary, this permit can be amended by the Common Council without the need for a public hearing. At six, hours Sunday through Thursday allow music between the hours of 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. with outdoor operations ending at 10 p.m. And seven, uh, yes, seven hours Friday and Saturday allow music between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m with outdoor operations ending at 11 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Yours. Go ahead. Um, we, we did have a lot of discussion on, on this particular item, <coughs> and you know, I, I'm personally of the belief, you know, the brewery can hold these events through getting um, special event permits, and I'm, one of my big questions is I'm wondering if we want to uh, have city staff and the brewery and elected as council and, and the uh, public safety committee to go through each event individually and have to vote on each of these events. Um, you know, we mentioned as we talked about downtown that we're a growing city and I, and I think we're facing some growing pains to be honest. Um, we have a business that's in, you know, not necessarily a traditional location for this kind of business, um, which I think offers, you know, a further look into the hours, but also a business that wants to hold different types of events that, you know, others like it um, really haven't done in Verona before. And at, at the Plan Commission, well, first starting out at, at Public Safety and then at Plan Commission, you know, I've asked city staff to look at the city ordinances that would be affected and see what the, what we need to do to make sure that you know we're not having to keep making exceptions after exceptions after exceptions um, 
but after speaking with uh, Mr. Nolan and, and the brewing company and with residents, I, I, I'm comfortable with giving the breweries the hours that they've requested. Um, and, and the linchpin for me is that uh, they're willing to come back and negotiate um, at, the at the end of the turn, at the end of the summer, or even even sooner. Um, and I guess I would like to spell out a little more which city staff members would be involved with meeting with the brewery and residents, and, and that being the administrator, the planner, and the police chief, um, making sure that all the residents are part of it, um, but that also we're not necessarily handcuffing the brewery and what they need to do. Um, so I, I look forward to hearing some of the comments from the other alders tonight. Um, but I personally believe that you know we should give the brewery the hours that they're asking for with the condition that we do revisit this again at the end of the summer. Thank you, Mr. Yers. Uh, perhaps before we have additional um, comments and questions, I'm going to ask Mr. Sayre and, and perhaps Mr. Uh, Burns if you would respond to some of the questions that we had tonight during the, the uh, public comment portion. And um, I don't know, if Adam, if you wrote down questions or not, but I, but I did. did you I, Adam, yes, if you want to yep. respond then. Andy, can you turn the screen on? The first question was, what is, what is the capacity of, of the patio? I don't think we have a, a hard number on that. Um, and that's something that will be established by the fire department once it actually would be constructed as well. And, and Carl might be able to speak to that in the future, what their goal is. Uh, second question was, where will the patio be located? Uh, this is the actual site plan on, on the screen here. The line right here is the, the building itself. We have the parking in the front and American uh, Ways uh, on the north side of the property. The red line, this would be a, a gate uh, extending from the building to the water's edge. And then this red line in the back would also be a gate that would extend from the building and zigzag uh, east and then south also to the water edge as well. So that would be the, the outdoor space, the area in between these two red lines. And there's a small peninsula out here that juts out into the stormwater pond. Uh, where will the speakers be located? Uh, the brewery has agreed to point the speakers towards the northwest, that would be towards the bypass, towards the quick trip. Um, the stage would be mounted or located in, in this general area here, and it would point uh, towards the northwest. Um, will, where will people park? That's something that we've, we've talked a lot about that. Um, obviously, there's an existing parking area in the front here. Um, we've talked about having that on-street parking. Uh, that's one of, those, one of those things that when this was approved, uh, it was approved as part of it, looking at that on-street parking. I've talked to Carl about possibly adding a temporary lot in that location. Uh, they're open to that conversation, and, uh, and, but I think we all want to wait and see how this goes. The reality is where they would put that temporary lot would be immediately east of their existing facility. Their, their long-term goal is to, to expand uh, to the east. So that would be an expense that um, if we make them put it in, if it's not needed, uh, we're in a situation we just, you know, basically made them spend a couple hundred thousand dollars to put in a temporary lot that's not being used. So Carl has agreed to revisit that conversation. If issues arise, if there's a strong parking demand out there, we'll sit down, take a look at that again, and he's, he's agreed to do that. I know he's also spoken with some of the adjacent businesses as well, talking about if they can use some of their uh, parking lots on the weekend when those aren't being utilized. Uh, what will the decibel levels be? We don't measure decibel levels. Uh, we look at uh, sound at the property line and we have a time that we cut it off. Um, that, that's in general how we look at it. It's easier to enforce that, the, to be honest. If you have a time when music stops, uh, you can tell the operator this is the time it has to stop. The PD knows what time it has to stop. And then we don't need people standing at the property lines with decibel readers trying to figure out are we dealing with wind conditions? Are we dealing with temperature, temperature conditions? A set time is, is, is the easiest way of, I've always found how to enforce this is just by having a time. It's easy to understand. Everybody gets it. Um, so no, we don't have uh, decibels on that. Will the fence, and, uh, will the fence enclosure, or where is the fence enclosure in the area? I think I, I went through that one. Um, one thing that was noted at the Planning Commission, and I know there's concerns from some of the residents, was possibly looking at fencing the entire pond. Staff is treating the, the water area as, as almost like a fence barrier. Uh, that is a wet pond, so pretty much unless we have a, a very significant drought period, that will be very wet at all times. It's, it's quite deep. Um, I think it's been, it's been wet ever since they dug it. So um, we're treating that water area as part of the fence. Um, where are the plans available for the public? Um, 
I have the plans in my office. I'm always more than happy to email those out. Currently, we don't have those on the website. Um, I don't I don't post those on there just from a time standpoint for myself. It takes a lot of time. Um, that's something I'm looking to, to do in the future as well, start posting these items on the website. Um, but I, I do have plans. I'm always happy to get those out. People can email me or call me. And I will email the plans if they want to see the application. So um, anytime for any project, anyone, anyone wants to see it, I'm, I'm more than happy to show it to them. And then finally is what is the current sound ordinance? Uh, the current sound ordinance, I believe, uh, it requires music to stop at, at 9 o'clock. I'm looking at Bernie. Is that correct, that music? 10 generally. 10, 10 generally. Um, 9 o'clock is what's utilized for, for other ones. So, yeah, so 9, 9, 10 o'clock is usually what, what is required for most venues. I think one of the things that we've discussed about this one is that those other venues are located in more of more populated areas. Um, one of the slides that, if Andy pops it up here on the screen, that we looked at the Planning Commission, Andy, thank you. Um, we looked at how, how far away uh, the business is actually from the adjacent residential areas. So going to the west, it is approximately 1,300 feet, and that's the west property line of the residence there. And then going east and northeast, that's 23, 2,400 feet. So it's, it's a great deal distance away. Plus on top of that, if when the sound is directed to the northwest, um, it should help limit the, the impact of that noise as well. Um, so those are all things that we the Planning Commission looked at. Um, and I, I think I answered all the questions. If I missed any, let, let me know. I think you did. I saw Mr. Beer's hand first and then Ms. Doyle. Or, I, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, um, you know, I think we've made a, a strong investment in the success of the Wisconsin Brewing Company, and, and uh, I think that was absolutely the right move of the city to do. And um, they have Verona, Wisconsin stamped on every one of their products, which they're proud of, and I think we should all be proud of. It's a, a very good, uh, good advertisement for the city. Um, and I think Mr. Years hit on something very important, that we've run into uh, growing pains here. This is a unique and new situation for the city. And, you know, there's no other place where there's an outdoor event space like this that might host a wedding or a corporate event uh, in the city. I think if, if we had a golf course or, or a banquet hall or something that had that, we, we would have already addressed this issue. But this seems like something new for the city that our ordinances aren't necessarily uh, haven't necessarily adapted on their own for quite yet. So I, I'm in favor of, of supporting the hours as, as uh, proposed. I, it, one question I had was what the ending hours are in the ordinances for weeknights, um, but it sounds like 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock. I, I would like to know if we could pin that down. And Go ahead, Mr. Sir. The ordinance does not distinguish between weekday or weeknight. Um, I mean, you can establish for this conditional use, you can put whatever hours you, you'd want on there. But the ordinance, as we have right now, does not distinguish between the what day of the week. Right. So, and I'm, I, I'm comfortable with the, the plans for the weekend hours of music ending at 11 p.m., outdoor operations ending at midnight. I, I guess the question I have for, for my colleagues here on the council is, is our comfort level with 10 p.m. music ending on uh, Sunday through Thursday on weeknights. I, I guess I'm more flexible on, on that you know, pushing that back to nine o'clock to respect some of the neighbors that are nearby. I think weeknights are obviously a little, little more uh, important to protect the, the tranquility of the area on a weeknight than they are on a weekend. So um, I would be comfortable making the motion or, or approving the motion uh, with either nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, but I guess I would lean towards, I've talked myself into leaning towards nine o'clock uh, on weeknights, but we have open to other input. Of course. Ms. Doyle, Ms. Yours, and then Mr. Manley. Um, I just wanted to interject back to Ms. Watson's comments. I believe there was um, a comment made about events being every night, and it was my understanding that there will not be music every single night, that this was something that would happen more for special events when, when the brewery is rented out and from time to time when they will have people performing there. Um, and I would like to echo some of Mr. Bear's comments that it, this is kind of a unique business for Verona. And I know at the plan commission during public comment, someone said, well, people should go to Madison for that. But I think that's, that's kind of the great thing about the Wisconsin brewery is that it's bringing that to Verona and kind of expanding Verona's reach and attraction and is a market that we have not yet tapped. So I'm excited about this proposal and do um, understand residents' concerns 
with noise, especially with a child of my own. I know it's not fun when, when your child does wake up in the middle of the night and having to ease that back, but um, I think that we can work together and that Carl is very willing to do so and work with the city and residents, and I'm confident that we can find a solution that works for all parties involved. Thank you. Mr. Yours? You know, first off, I, I want to thank um, the police chief and Lieutenant Dresser for doing a very thorough job, which they do every single time. Whenever we have something coming before public safety, everything is right there for us. Um, and so I, I don't want this to be seen as us kind of you know, disregarding that, because it's certainly not. Um, one question I do have, because as I said, the linchpin for this conditional use permit for me is revisiting this again at the end of the season. Um, the end of the season is a very broad term. Um, and I'm wondering um, if Chief Coughlin or if, or if uh, Mr. Nolan, if either of you have um, ideas of what you, what you believe to be the end of the season, um, just so that you know, city, city staff isn't thinking we're going to be revis revisiting this in August um, and the brewery thinks we're going to be doing this in September. Um, and, and so I just want that cleared up just to try and maybe alleviate a problem that we can stop now. Mr. Sarah? I think you can put a date in the permit if you want to be clear. I mean, you could pick November 1st. Okay. I think that's reasonable. Mr. Manley? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to begin by thanking um, the, the folks who came out tonight to express their, um, their concerns about this proposal. And I think some of us have received email um, and phone calls as well. And uh, I think it's important for people to know that we, we hear the concerns and we appreciate you bringing them uh, to our attention. Um, we, we take them very seriously. Uh, you know, a lot of us have uh, families with, with young kids and we can very much relate to the idea that we, you know, we don't want to burden families with, with noise really late at night. But what I'm, at this point, I'm persuaded that we can find the sweet spot here where we allow uh, the, the business to, to move forward with, with their business plan and, and have a process in place where if something unforeseen does happen, we can address it. And I'm, I'm very encouraged by the fact that we heard from uh, Mr. Nolan at the Public Safety and Welfare Committee uh, before it went before this issue went to the Plan Commission, and one of the things that he gave in a, a, a very strong and, and unequivocal assurance to us at that time was that he wants to be a good neighbor, and he also said he's very easy to find, and uh, I've I've always found that to be true. I, I had a chance <coughs> to talk with him over the weekend too. Um, you know, I think that he, that I would rather err on the side of um, let's try and help this business um, execute the business plan that they think works for them um, and provide a, a, neat, a unique entertainment venue for our city. Um, and if we find that it's not working the way we all thought, let's revisit it um, and le and let's let's make some changes if if they're truly necessary i'd rather take that approach and 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 as opposed to let's make it really restrictive on the front end and look at making it less restrictive at some point down the road because i think that um that's unlikely that we would ever do that the the, the fact of the matter is that regulatory bodies typically don't uh, loosen regulations they they tighten them um, and, and so I, I guess that would be my appeal to my to my fellow alders I you know I think we're all really excited about uh, having this business in our city many of us when when this was um, you know first being discussed uh, part of what made it exciting was that Mr. Nolan and his business partners were very clear that they wanted this to not just be a brewery but a destination and that they wanted to make th 
this an opportunity to bring people into our city who might not otherwise come here and see what we have to offer. And, and I, I, I want to help him be successful doing that. And um, while at the same time making the commitment um, to, to the neighbors in, in, in that area that if there is a problem, the city of Verona and, and I think Mr. Nolan himself uh, will work with you to, to try and resolve them. Thank you. Um, I stated at the Planning Commission meeting that I was supportive of the hours that have been requested then. Um, just I, I just have to make a comment because I think as I've been listening to the conversation this evening and when I listened to the Planning Commission meeting, um, so many times I, I hear Mr. Nolan referred to as Carl. We don't hear that a lot in, in the city when we're talking about businesses. In the short time that, that Carl has been here, um, he has wanted to become involved in the city. He has become involved in the city. Um, he has indicated all along that he wants to be a, a good partner and, and work with everyone in the community. Um, and I've had conversations with, with Carl since the Planning Commission meeting last Monday, but also with a number of his employees. And every single person that is employed by uh, the cap by capital by Wisconsin Brewery um, has the same message that they that they want to be good neighbors but I just want to make the point that more often than not tonight and at other meetings people are referring to him as as Carl and that's that's really nice to see so thank you for that other questions or comments Mr. Diaz uh, question or comment and then some questions um, I <clears throat> am also in favor of the, the requested hours that the, the brewery wants um, for a couple of reasons. One, because they're willing to revisit it. I don't, I don't think we're going to have any problems between the brewery and the police department. I think I'm, I'm fairly confident the brewery will work with the police department and with the neighbors to, to make sure that this, this does work out. Um, and then <clears throat> the other part of it that, that sets my mind at ease is that they're not going to have music every single night. I think I would have a little more concerns if, if it was going to be a... 24-7 all the time concert venue um, and, and then of course we can't underestimate how important it is as an economic driver and a, a draw to the city as well um, and my question is there's not a motion on the floor currently there's uh, not would perhaps Dale like to make one since he is on the planning commission I'm not going to twist anyone's <laughs> arms but the uh, we have the ability to make motions uh, yeah. Yours. Yes, I, I, I will make a motion to approve the um, conditional use permit uh, for the Wisconsin Brewery with the following exceptions. Um, if I may, uh, one, the outdoor patio fencing shall be a minimum of 48 inches tall. Alcohol consumption shall be limited to the fenced area shown on the site plan or inside the brewery. All, er all areas where alcohol is consumed shall be monitored by staff. The fence and gate for the outdoor patio shall comply with the requirements from the fire department, police department, and building inspector. Four, the applicant and property owner agree to enter into a property use agreement with the city to allow for the use of city property by the Wisconsin Brewing Company. Five, that city staff, including the administrator, planner, and police chief, will review the hours of operation and on November 1st to determine if modifications are needed, actually let me rephrase that, no later than November 1st, um, to determine if modifications are needed to the hours. If the staff believes that modifications are necessary, this permit can be amended by the Common Council without the need for a public hearing. And that six hours Sunday through Thursday allow music between the hours of 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And seven hours Friday and Saturday allow music between the hours of 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. We have a motion by Mr. Yers uh, with the conditions that he uh, laid out. I'll second. We have a second by Mr. Baer. We are open for discussion on the motion. Mr. Burns. Yeah, just wanted to uh, raise the question of when outdoor operations would end. Uh, that was also included in conditions six and seven. We may want to address that as well. If, for example, uh, music, I think the intent would be if they would have music ending at 11, that operations would end at midnight, for example. Sunday through Thursday, operations ending at 11 p.m., and Friday and Saturday, operations ending at midnight. Thank you for that clarification. Further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, 
I'm sorry, Ms. Doyle? Um, just for clarification purposes, Mr. Yours, is the, the um, exception to not have a public hearing, is that just for ease of being able to modify the arrangement? Mr. Yours? I'm comfortable with, ta with uh, having the public hearing, but yeah, I, I think so. Because yeah. that would uh, but, require... Um, and and I, I, I would actually um, like it when city staff reviews that, that the residents in that neighborhood are, are part of that discussion as well. Mr. Sarah, if you would. Sure, I, I put that in there. Uh, I was just trying to clarify so there wasn't a question um, of yes or no because a lot of times these come back and it's do you have to do one, do you, do you not have to do one? Um, but that, that's the reason why it was in there because of, because of me. Further questions, comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Yours. Uh, thank you. Under 9A3, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution R-14-006, approving a wow, approving a precise implementation plan for a planned unit development located east of Enterprise Drive, west of Red and Soccer Park, and north of Cross Country Road to allow for the construction of 76 apartment units. Mr. Years, did you make that motion? Yes. Okay. Motion by Mr. Years. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Doyle. Mr. Years. Thank you. The applicant has submitted a request for a planned unit development precise implementation plan review. This request is the final step in the planned development process. The developer is proposing to construct phases one and two of the Murray Glen apartment project. The proposed P proposed PIP will allow for the construction of 76 market rate apartments. Units located east of Enterprise Drive, west of Red and Soccer Park, north of Cross Country Road. The proposed units would be located in three buildings that include both underground and surface parking. The plan commission held the required public hearing on March 3rd, 2014 and recommended approval of the PIP with the following conditions. First, that prior to the issuance of building permits, the app applicant shall submit a revised erosion control plan, stormwater management plan, and public street improvements for city staff review and approval. And two, prior to the issuance of building permits, the developer shall enter into a developer's agreement with the city. And I would um, have those conditions put on to the motion. So that was just checking. And Ms. Doyle, that's acceptable. We have a motion, we have a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Any discussion, Mr. Years? Um, at, at Plan Commission, um, most comments were favorable. Um, there was public comment made um, in opposition to the apartments, um, saying that we do have too many apartments and uh, things of that nature. Um, having looked, they, they did bring samples of building material which all seemed um, to work with, with the development. Um, one of the comments that kind of was recurring was we liked that the buildings didn't necessarily have a multifamily look to them necessarily, but they had more of a neighborhood look and feel. Um, so re residents, uh, so the plan commission were, were uh, generally uh, agreeable. Thank you, Mr. Yours. Other questions, comments on the motion? Uh, Mr. McGilvery? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do we have the developer, a representative from the developer here? We do. I wonder if uh, we might, I know that one of the uh, topics for discussion at, at some point was uh, the senior housing that you were anticipating bringing that in. Um, I'm wondering if you could address that a little bit. One of the questions I've had and other people have asked me is when you might anticipate those, uh, those or that part of the parcel uh, being developed. It seems to be a quite a bit of interest for that type of yeah there certainly is hi I'm Gary Buns uh, I spoke with everybody months ago um, regarding the senior housing the phase one and phase two first and we're currently under um, discussions with the financial institutions to provide the wherewithal um, for phase one and two and then um, our intent is to skip phase three and go to phase four as far as the timeline uh, my understanding is the sooner the better and and quite frankly we would like to do it that way as well uh, I think part of it would depend on putting the infrastructure in seeing how well the phases uh, one and two rent up 
And then um, our initial intent is to go right to phase four. Thanks. Mr. McElroy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and in talking to Mr. Sayer, he had mentioned that uh, depending upon um, how the market conditions were and your bids, your bid packages as they came back for the roads, there was the potential that you would put in the roads, all the roads for that part of the development at this time too, if the bids came back favorable? Great question. The bid um, package went out, I believe, last week, Wednesday, and an amendment or some other information went out today. I start meeting with them tomorrow okay. at 9.30. Um, my personal preference would be to take the paint all in one hit and just get it done. Um, because it, you know, it is more expensive, but over the long term, I think it's going to be uh, more reasonable. We don't have to mobilize equipment twice, disrupt, pay for two moving fees, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I, I would like to answer the question, but I really can't without actually seeing where the numbers do come in at. But um, the reality of it is if we can do it in one step, that's the path we'd like to take. In addition to that, it also makes it easier for us to get to phase four because it is that northeast corner of the project that we most likely will need the road, that portion of the road in for, um, uh, develop or to get access, whatever, um, for phase four. Thank you, and, and I realize that you didn't have them back. I just, I like to ask the question yeah. to get the intent. It's always nice to have it on public record. Sure, thank you. <laughs> so I appreciate the answer, thank you. Thanks. Thank Any you. Mr. Questions? Yours, um, kind of in that same vein, I believe the question was asked the plan commission as well, um, but I just want to make sure these streets are gonna be public streets, correct? Yes. And not privately? Perfect. Further questions, comments? Mr. McGilvery? And, and this would not be for the developer, this is more for Adam. Um, Adam, I wonder if you could just speak to uh, the quantity. So we're using 76, uh, where does that put us uh, moving forward for other developments that might come forward? I, I, and I recognize that the senior component is not part of that number. Sure. So the, the phase one has 50 units in it, phase two has 26, and phase three would have 32. The phase one allocation, uh, that was allocated 2013, and that was for 50 units, and that took up the entire 2013 allocation. The phase two was allocated for 2014, took up 26 out of the 50 units, and phase three was allocated for 2015 and took up that 32 out of the 50. So right now, uh, phase two will take approximately half of what's in that residential phasing policy. Phase three will take roughly over half. And then phase four, as you said, would not count uh, towards that residential phasing policy. Thank you. And I just asked the question for the public because we do get questions on that. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Nay. Uh, that motion carries. We'll let the minutes reflect that Mr. Steiner voted no. <laughs> Mr. Yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under 9A4, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution R-14-007, approving the preliminary plat for the Prairie Oaks second edition located east of Enterprise Drive, west of Redden Soccer Park, and north of Cross Country Road to allow for the creation of six lots and three outlots. We have a motion by Mr. Yers. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. McGilvery. Mr. Yers. Thank you. The applicant has submitted a request for the preliminary plat to create six lots and three outlots with the Prairie Oaks second edition plat. The proposed lots will contain the individual apartment buildings and, fe and future senior housing complex. Outlots one and two will contain a future bike and pedestrian path. Outlot three will be dedicated to the city for stormwater purposes. The plan commission reviewed the preliminary plat at the March 3rd, 2014 meeting and recommended approval. Thank you, Mr. Yours. Are there questions or comments from the council? Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Yours. Thank you. Under 9A45, uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve resolution R-14-007, approving the final plat for the Prairie Oak second edition located east of Enterprise Drive, west of Redden Soccer Park and north of Cross Country Road to allow for the creation of outlot six Six outlot, six lots and three outlots, excuse me, with the condition that the city engineer shall review and approve the final plat. 
We have a motion by Mr. Years. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. McGilvery. Mr. Years. Um, this is much, much like the second one, or uh, the one right before. The applicant has submitted a request uh, for the final plat to create six lots and three out lots with the Prairie Oaks second edition plat. Um, the plan commission did review the final plat at the March 3rd, 2014 meeting and recommended its approval. Thank you, Mr. Years. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Not seeing any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Is there anything else from the plan commission? No, we won't take your time anymore. Thank you. We are moving then to the finance committee. Mr. McGilvery. Thank you, Mr. Bayer. Under item 9B1, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the monthly bills in the amount of $433,753.60. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Doyle. Mr. McGilvery. Thank you. In the way of explanation, three of the larger uh, items from this month's bills, the uh, first being the AECOM for technical services provided through February 21st of 2014, uh, $28,078.52. Uh, second, uh, we would have a payment to the Bond Trust Services Corporation for a refunding of bonds series two, 2013A. That is $196,584.03. And finally, to Wastewater Management of Wisconsin, Minnesota, February Refuse and Recycling uh, through March 31st, uh, $42,730.59. You've heard the explanation of the major expenditures. Are there any questions? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve the payment of bills in amount totaling $433,753.60. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. S Mr. McGilvery. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under item 9B2, I'll make a motion to deny the claim of excessive assessment for property owned by Apex Hawthorne Hills LLC and Apex Hometown Grove LLC for the 2013 tax year. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Manley. Mr. McGilvery. Thank you. I will let Mr. Burns take this. Uh, we did take up action at finance and it was unanimous to Mr. deny. Mr. Burns, please. Yeah, this is a claim for excessive assessment uh, from Apex Hometown Grove and Hawthorne Hills for the 2013 tax year. Uh, they are claiming that their excess assessments are excessive and seeking the refund of taxes in the amount of $33,831. I did want to note that uh, the city uh, also denied claims for the 2011 and 2012 tax year, and those um, claims. Uh, subsequently, uh, a lawsuit has been filed, and that is pending. Uh, Stafford Rosenbaum is defending the city uh, um, on those claims, and we are currently in the stage where the plaintiff has obtained an appraisal. Uh, that's being reviewed. Uh, the city is obtaining its own appraisal, and then there would be mediation and uh, potentially going to action in the court. So the recommendation from the attorney at Stafford is to deny this claim as well, uh, which would likely then get added into that pending lawsuit. However, um, I should note also that for the 2013 tax year, the um, Apex Hometown Grove and Hawthorne Hills failed to appeal, appear at the Board of Review. Uh, there is case law that in indicates that if there is a pending um, claim, you do not need to appear at the Board of Review unless the assessments change. As we know, however, this was a revaluation year, so the assessments were reduced, and it's our belief that they sacrificed their ability to file this claim by not appearing at the Board of Review. So the recommendation from the attorney is to deny the claim and also to note that one of the reasons for denial is failure to appear at the Board of Review to challenge the assessment. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Mr. Manley? Thank you. Would it be appropriate to include that uh, rationale for denial in the motion or just have the minutes reflect that the that the body is 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 using his failure to appear for the 2013 uh, board of review as as part of our basis for denial mr burns i believe it would be appropriate to include it in, in the motion uh, i don't see any uh, downside to including that and i think it makes it more clear And the second is, yep. unless second. Uh, unless we have anyone that opposes it, <laughs> we could have a separate motion, but seeing unanimous consent will allow it to be considered with the motion. 
Any further question on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Is there anything else from the Finance Committee? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. McGilvery. Uh, we're moving on to Public Safety and Welfare Committee. Mr. Manley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, under item 9C1, I'll make a motion to approve an application for a Class B beer and a Class C wine license for Brews Brothers Pub located at 611 Hometown Circle with Stephen Day as the agent. We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bear. Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think a lot of us know that the, that the Brews Brothers Pub uh, is, is coming to town. Uh, they're seeking um, not a hard liquor license, but just beer and wine um, for what will primarily be a restaurant that serves uh, gourmet hamburgers. And uh, we discussed this at the Public Safety and Welfare Committee uh, previously and gave it our unanimous recommendation, and we hope that you all will uh, give it your approval as well. Thank you, Mr. Manley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Manley. Mr. McGilvery? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would you uh, have the record reflect that I will be abstaining from this vote? I work for the company that's building the building that Bruce Brothers is in. We will have the minutes reflect that. Questions, comments on the motion? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve the application. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried, and the minutes will reflect that Mr. McGilvery abstained. Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under item 9C2, I'll make a motion to approve an application for a temporary Class B beer license for the Verona Mud Fest to be held on Saturday, May 17th, uh, 2014, from Mike O'Brien of Ice Inc. We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Ricci. Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think m many of us are very familiar with this event, which has been taking place for a number of years in our city. Uh, it, it's a great event, a lot of fun, and it it raises money for a good cause, which is our youth hockey program and and um, and ice arena at at the Eagles Nest. And um, I'm very excited to hear at the at the public hearing that they're anticipating between a thousand and and twelve hundred participants this year. And um, I think that's that's a great thing that we it, it's a great thing that we attract that type of, of an event to our city. And um, I we gave our unanimous recommendation. Uh, earlier today and I, I hope that we can get uh, a, a similar vote here this evening. Questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under item 9C3, I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 14-840 which amends section 27 of chapter one of title 10 of our code of ordinances, motor vehicles and traffic parking prohibited zones to prohibit parking on American way between County Highway PB and John P. Livesey Boulevard. We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Yours. Mr. Mr. Manley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This, uh, this item or this proposed ordinance would um, restrict parking on both sides of the street along um, um, American <coughs> Way. Or is it, yes, American Way. And it's, it, it's, it, the, the concern was brought to the council by Latitude uh, a, a Corporation. And the concern was that if there's parking uh, on American Way near their, uh, the area where their um, delivery trucks um, are coming and going that it, it creates a traffic problem. So the, the solution was to prohibit parking on that sub, uh, segment of, of American Way um, and, and ease that congestion problem. And at the same time, the, the feeling was that it would not um, unduly burden um, parking at, at other adjacent property owners. So we gave our unanimous recommendation again and, and ask for your support this evening. Thank you for that explanation. Questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Is there anything else from Public Safety and Welfare Committee? Nothing further, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Manley. Uh, we are moving then to new business. We have discussion and possible action regarding approval of operator licenses. Ms. Lynch, please. Tonight we have operator licenses from Travis Murray at Prairie <coughs> Oak Sitco, Stephen Caldwell at the Draft House, and William Faust at Wildcat Lanes. You've heard the list of the applicants. What's your pleasure? Move to approve. We have a motion by Mr. Baer. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Yers. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval of operator licenses signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. We are on to agenda item number 11, which is announcements. Do we have any announcements this evening? Mr. Steiner? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we will have a senior commission meeting tomorrow night, the 11th. And it will be at the Senior Center at 5.30 with our new director, Mary Hansen. Um, so it's been a, a year since we've had a meeting, so it <laughs> seems like a long time. Uh, next week, uh, on the 19th, the Verona Historical Society will host uh, another fun adventure with local schools that occurred many years ago. It will start at uh, 3 p.m. at the Senior Center on the 19th. Bye Bye Birdie will be landing in Verona next month, April. The tickets are on sale already by the Verona Area Community Theater at VACT.org or 845-VACT. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steiner. Any other announcements? Ms. Ricky? Just wanted to announce another event um, on March 12th at 6 o'clock at City Hall Park Planning Meeting for Cathedral Point Park, which has been moved up a year. Um, will be pl taking place on Wednesday, March 12th. Thank you. Other announcements this evening? Seeing none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Manley, seconded by Mr. Diaz. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried, and we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.